Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you've been here for a little bit, you'd know that I like to chat about content creation and not just how to do it, but why we do it and the philosophy behind it. Honestly, it's just a little series that's a little bit cathartic for me. It makes me feel good. It helps me express the way I feel as a content creator. So hopefully you guys extract something from this, but worst case scenario, I've got YouTube therapy for me. What I wanna talk about this one, guys, is why you're not seeing progress or why we don't see progress enough as creatives. Um, it overlaps with a couple of themes that you would have seen up on YouTube before. It's probably not the first person to touch on this subject at all, but it is a very important subject. So as you're going through your creative journey, you're gonna be so motivated, so excited, so pumped to get going right at the start. You're gonna be shooting every day. You're so excited. That camera is new, it's fresh, it's exciting. It's something that gets you up in the morning. It's something that you wanna keep on doing. And if any of you have done this for more than a couple of years, you would know eventually that burns out a little bit. It's less about just being excited to shoot. You get more excited for maybe just projects. So you got a project coming up and you really enjoy it. You really want to get stuck into it. It's sparking ideas for you and that creativity is just flowing. I feel like at the start, the creativity just flows so easily just because everything's interesting when it's seen through the scope of a lens for the first time. Whereas as you shot more and more and you had more experience with these subjects, these things sort of they kind of start to die off a little bit or it's harder to stoke that fire. That spark's always there, but it's harder to get it going from my experience anyway. We've been in stage four lockdown for three months now in Melbourne, which means not leaving the house, only laid out for an hour a day, always have to wear masks. So I can't do the style of content I really want to do, which is like walking and talking, going on adventures with my amazing girlfriend. And you know, that lack of I guess a creative or inspiring environment has caused me to be quite stagnant. And what I realized was it was actually not the environment that was causing me to not be creative. It was actually my lack of persistence and repetition through the environment that I've been given. Yes, it's a shit hand to be locked inside your house and not being able to move around and create and, you know, be more animated. And I find the sitting chair videos are hard to create a story with. And I really like telling stories as a filmmaker creator, whatever you want to call it. So it's hard for me, it's not the content I want to put it out, but I also realized that I'm never going to get better at this and sitting in this chair and talking to you guys without actually doing the work and sitting down and doing a couple of crap videos, maybe a hundred crap videos before it's something that people want to listen to, that people want to get into. So I think it's really important to do that repetition. And I think as we evolve as creators, it's important to keep on creating no matter what you know pick up your camera and shoot something you're going to see the first few shots there's going to be something really uninspiring so if like for example i want to take photos of my bed it's going to be really really uninspiring to take photos of my bed but then you start playing around with different lenses different angles different lighting situations and you can create something out of something every time i really believe that if you're patient enough and you actually try like give it a good effort you can create something i think it's very easy to stay motivated when you're always shooting exciting subjects to your clients that are just giving you all the work you need and all the creative freedom you need. You know, there's these brands that really vibe with your style and it's pushing you to create more and be more. But I think the real test of a creative is someone moving outside of their comfort zone for creation. So for like me, I do lots of food photos, very comfortable being creative with food photos. If you gave me a fashion brand, I'd be able to do it, but that instant creativity wouldn't come to me. I know what makes a good fo food photo. I know what makes them exciting. I know what people want to see on Instagram, on the websites, all that sort of stuff, just because I've been shooting it for three years. But if you give me some fashion stuff, I probably only shot that like four or five times over my career so it's harder for me to spark that little bit of creativity and go all right this is what we're doing we're going to nail it but that becomes from a lack of repetition so if i really wanted to get really good at fashion and progress my fashion career i would go out and do the free shoots i'd go out and contact people hey i love how you dress i love your style whatever it is people on instagram facebook wherever you can find them can we do some shots and you learn that way it's learning through repetition i think sometimes we can get stuck especially when we're not in a creative environment we get stuck thinking about how do I, you know, I want to be better, I want to grow, I want to keep growing because that's the exciting part of being a creative right at the start is that your growth is just like, you just like explode with growth and you're so, it's so fun and exciting and I still remember that, you know, every single photo you take, even though if you look back at them now, they're awful but every single one was amazing and you can see like every photo you almost get a little bit better whereas now you might have days where you're absolutely nailing it you know, it's a couple of years down the track and then there might be days where you're nailing it, days where you come back from your shoot and you don't feel like you're really on your A game and you know, that shit happens, but it's about pushing through that because you're gonna have these monumental breakthroughs where you're gonna be able to 
smash through these barriers that you think you've got and realize how far you've come, but that only comes from the repetition. I think there's a lot of reason why people get uh, frustrated with this. It's really hard to continue growing. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're a photographer, videographer, you know, painter, builder, whatever it is, you know, carpenter. It's really hard to have continual growth throughout your career. It's just like a very difficult thing to do for anyone. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to be make as much growth as you did this year as last year, especially this year because 2020 is fucked. Um, so repetition, repetition, repetition. If you're a beginner and you're watching this, um, my biggest tip is just never stop shooting. Like never, like every day, make it a goal to get like, make at least one photo that you really like. It can be the most boring mundane shit. The other day, when I was applying this and I was just seeing how I go, I just thought to myself, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna shoot stuff in my garden. Now, if you don't know, my garden is fucking tiny. But I actually did the shoot and I really loved the results. I really loved it. Point is guys, just repetition. Do more, shoot more, don't stop shooting. It doesn't matter if you take the worst photos in the world, nobody has to see them. So if you don't love the photos, you just delete them off your SD card and worst case scenario, there's always a lesson to learn. So you gotta analyze your photos, see why you haven't created the photos you want. What style do you like? What photographers do you like? How do they shoot their photos? Try and break them down. Keep learning, keep repeating and that's the way you're going to grow like it's so easy to get caught up in the subject when you're just growing non-stop at the start but when things start to stagnate out with that growth you've learned the basics but then like learning those advanced techniques takes so much more time investment and physical investment into picking up your camera and shooting that it's really hard to get motivated because you know all the basics and you know all the things but then those next things are just such a big time sink for you to get right but at the end the reward is so much sweeter i promise you that guys that is it guys i'm sorry this isn't the content actually i'm not sorry we're doing this anyway chats with ed um hopefully 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 we're allowed outside again soon i think it's really kind of shit that we're locked up but what can you do it's life at the moment this is melbourne life um i think i can sort of travel around i just don't really want to go shooting by myself it seems a bit uh I don't know, there's something weird about me going out and shooting and using my license as a photographer to like go and live my life while the rest of the state's in lockdown. It's just weird to me, but we'll see how we go. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. See you soon. If you got this far and you didn't get bored, like, comment, subscribe, all that. Um, tell me what was your biggest hurdle as a filmmaker or creator, photographer, whatever it is. Um, let me know because I think it's really interesting to see where people broke down. For me, it was about a year and a half in, I just stopped seeing like awesome growth. And then I had to focus more on the business side of my business to make this work, which was less fun for me. Obviously, the creative side is awesome, but the business side is not the funniest thing in the world. But, you know, you got to do that. Cheers for joining me, guys. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. See you later.